on to the rear end. Um, something that can fail, it's known to fail. Not terribly often, except for on 2050s and 2150s. This is the idler here that drives the hydraulic pump. You got your long shaft here that goes all the way from the engine back to the PTO. Goes through that gear there, which drives this gear, which then drives the gear that's up here, turning the hydraulic pump. Uh, this one doesn't turn terribly fast when, I guess you can count the teeth, but quite a gear reduction. But the shaft turns and these needle bearings in the housing here and if those needle bearings go out then the shaft turns in the housing and starts grinding it out and that's your whole rear end so i always replace these needle bearings they're not that expensive if i'm in here um just as a precautionary thing these uh that's a little end thrust which ain't bad there's thrust washers in there It don't feel too bad but it feels like there might be a little looseness in them but for what a pair of bearings cost and a little bit of time we're gonna do it uh, let's see I gotta I'll have to pull the uh, gear shift and then that front cover I mean you can slide the shaft out backwards if you could pull that bearing out backwards then you'd probably be all right but um, it's just as easy we're only talking a few bolts and a shift lever gear shift is pretty straightforward Two bolts hold it down and go some more paint. That's even a brand new bolt. Now this dial, the springs will stay down in there, or they should. It's probably, there's a gasket. Which reminds me, I guess I need to get that gasket while I'm at it. Centering springs are down in here. The way the holes are cut, they're not going to fall out until you get them to the top. So if you do drop them, it's all on you. Now we just got bolts around the perimeter of this cover. Probably a ratchet would be faster. wires over. I've got the neutral safety switch disconnected so I don't get any surprises there. Well good news it doesn't look like a, a meth lab all the teeth are there. So to get this out we just pull this cotter pin and it's just a regular old cotter pin. I'll put a new one in. Don't need that uh, coming out because I tried to save 10 cents for a cotter pin then the shaft can come out and then we can drive the bearings out if for some reason you're replacing this because the bearing went out and the gear got chewed up and you're going to find a used one keep an eye out they changed the angle of the tooth cut um, at some point these gears have the part number cast right into them so if uh, all that's all you got to do is match up the number you've got, but if you just grab one out of another tractor, it may possibly be cut the wrong way and it won't mesh with the gear below or above. If you change all three, then you're good. But all I can figure is it changed the, and it would, uh, because of the helical cut, the gears want to thrust one way or the other, depending on which side the power is coming from and the angle of the teeth. So if they changed from that way to this way, it would change which way the, the gear gets pushed. They did offer a kit as a uh, update. Let's see, that's why you don't reuse it. That one just half just broke. Don't want to let it fall in. That... Um, Ran a lube line from up front here and into the shaft that had to have a new shaft because the shaft had drillings. They had problems on, oops, and that one 
Yeah, they're good for about one bending, and that's about it. There we go. Now, should just be able to go like this. Hopefully you're seeing it. Stuck my finger on the other end. And... Walk that shaft right out. Don't set it somewhere where it's gonna fall on the rear end like I'm just about to do, or on the floor. There we go. Okay, there's a thrust washer on each end of this gear, so I think that's steel so you could fetch it out with a magnet if it fell in but it's better just not to let it drop in the first place yeah it's steel see i would say the way this one's cut and from the dark appearance on the front there this tractor has a long history or i don't know it hasn't didn't have the best care before it got here how about we put it that way you can see it was running kind of dry up front here and so the angle of the teeth were pushing it towards the front and putting a lot of pressure on that and it was did not have the best oil in it when it first arrived yeah i think it had some lubrication issues at some point i can see there's and it kind of fits in there that explains why there was as much back and forth slop a little bit of wear into the housing there I could try to uh, shim it. Front appears to be all right. But I think the shim would be thin enough. It wouldn't hold up very good. The other option would be to custom make a washer that's the right thickness. I think we'll live with it. It'll leave room for oil. It's not a huge slop. Okay, here we have, well, it's a 7 8 socket. Looks like 15 16 might work just as well. Just using it as a driver to get the old one out. Maybe. Kind of acts like there's a lip out there. Oh, I can feel some burrs. Maybe we should go back the other way. Let's go through it and get the front one out. Uh oh, I need another Craftsman extension. There's the old one. Not terrible. Them needles are kind of leaning, which means they're worn enough to where there's a gap between them. It was time. Was it an imminent danger of failing? No. And the oil was getting into it. It feels good and lubed. But once again, not going to get any easier than it is now. Now I'm going to try driving the other one the other direction. Since there seems to be a burr on the front.
Gotta love that lifetime guarantee on this stuff. A little harder to get the Craftsman anymore, but what the heck. Maybe I'll change my channel name to the Tool Abuse Channel. Oh yeah, I don't know while it shows up, but them needles are leaning. Here's your new one. 7-11-1-4-8-3-4. And you can use a socket to put it back together. But I also have the OTC 05 driver that fits them quite nicely. Once again, not sure how well it comes through. There's a new one. Them needles are packed together a lot better. It also fits, uh, I mean, driver ain't meant to be a super snug fit, but it definitely fits better than before. So I'll drive the front one in first, because that way I can get the, that doohickey, the um, anvil, the handle. You can get that through the back hole. There she goes. Oh, goodbye, Tool. Hello, Tool. Uh, I might get a socket and drive it in just a little farther. Just because this hole here, this little notch of a hole, Let's oil down from above to lubricate it. Gets between the thrust washer, drips down in there and keeps oil in that needle bearing. So you don't want it blocked off. The nice thing about the tool is since it goes inside the bearing, needles ain't getting thrown around. I'm going to drive that in just a little bit farther with the socket. There. You can see it's just, just up to the lube hole. So we're going to call that good. Yeah, those feel much better. So now I need to find a new cotter key, cotter pin, cotter. Uh, let's see. Let's see, the new washer was on the back. Someone's been in here before, there's no doubt about that. Let's see, that's probably a good angle. Just thinking about the angle the hole's going through, so it's easier to put that cotter pin in. And there it is. Slight amount of back and forth, but it feels better that way. I feel good about that. Well, everything's uh, had a chance to cure Loctite wise. Um, everything's turning like it should. 
smooth, but no slop. Something I wanted to point out is there's a hole right there. And what that does is as the gears bring oil to the top, it gets slung around and over on this side, that's what this cap right here is, soft plug. They drill through and make a little uh, catch basin channel. And then they drill a hole through there into the catch basin. So as oil follows these teeth up from lower parts of the transmission, it gets slung over into that catch basin. And the same thing on the back bearing, another hole. And then it can flow into these two cavities. And then the only way it has to come out or can come out is through the bearing and it lubricates the bearings. Then from there, it's gonna slide or you know come out here and go down this face. And not that face because that one sticks out farther. And that's the front one. That's probably why the front one always has trouble. But anyways, it comes down and follows into this hole here, which uh, gets the two bearings for the uh, idler gear for the hydraulic pump drive. And then they just come out the end, go back into the transmission. You got transmission gears down in there spinning that will uh, fling oil up in to help get it up onto everything. Well, fortunately for me, I was down to my last gasket. I guess it's not fortunate I'm down to my last, but I had one more to put on there and cover that up. Get that back together and then we'll see if we can slip the pump in. I don't want to forget putting a new o-ring down there but for the moment I'm going to see if this pump will slip in there. I don't think it will. No, no. So I think I will take this stuff off the back. I believe I've done that before. And then I think I, if I remember right, I bolt the bottom piece down, then I can spin the fitting in, then put this piece back, then put this piece back on. Or I could pull the three point lift cylinder, but then I have to flip it over, take the cover off, disconnect linkages. So we're gonna give this a good old college try. By taking both the fittings off the back of the pump, I was able to get it in without removing the lift cylinder. This is just free floating, so I gotta get my new O-ring, which it doesn't look like it came with, but I've got something. And at least loosely bolt that down. There's a gasket that goes in there. I still gotta so have to pull the pump back out, but it really wasn't that bad, as you can see. Get the gasket on there, bolt that down, and then I'll be able to slide that down in there and go from there. Okay, now we've got our gasket on. And it slid out of place, of course. There. Stay, darn you. Okay, it comes with bolts with, and you want to make sure you leave the copper crush washers on there because they keep the oil from following the bolt hole on up and your hydraulic oil re leaking into your rear end. It'd be a slow leak, but it'd be a leak. 12 point ferry bolts. I had to grind the, I'm guessing that's a forging line or something off, but a little off the fitting here to get just enough room. I had to have the pump tightened down. And then it just, just, just fits in there. Come on. Okay, I already test fit this. There it goes. I took the bottom fitting out because I knew it, this would hit as it swung around. So it should be able to 
roll them together. Get my O-ring down in there. this I might have to go past and then come back just because of the angle of everything where'd my wrench go man someone really tightened this baby down Swing you around over here. That's going to work better. To bring them together as it swings around. Fortunately, this is an O ring boss type, type fitting, so we can do such crazy things. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. There it goes. When in doubt, force it. down in here so that doesn't turn on me everything stays lined up I'll tighten that down first so it squares up against the o-ring good then the other fittings should hopefully uh, fall into place as well well I had this wrench around that I heated up and bent and then broke and my brother just brazed it back together we'll see how good his brazing job is other than that, I'll probably go buy a crow foot end to get in there. Any excuse for a new tool, right? Well, it took a month of Sundays with this wrench, but by golly, she's tight. And I didn't have to pull all those other parts apart and mess up more paint, so I guess it's all good. Double check these. Yep, tight, tight. Need to slip that suction tube in there, and that's good. Well, that was this was a bit of a juggling trick. The bolts that came with it were just a little too long. They were, uh, I think, inch and three quarters, and I got some inch and a half ones. And I think for a suction line, they're gonna have plenty of. And then slid the O-ring down in there. There's no O-ring groove to hold it, but I think I've got it in place. But Probably in retrospect, probably would have been just as far ahead to pull the top cover and pull this three-point hitch lift cylinder. But by golly, I, I think I've got it, so we're not going back now. It's in there. It was a challenge. I think, honestly, I'd recommend doing it the right way. You might get away with lifting this up, but this dash pod goes down through there and you got to get stuff lined back up. The correct way is to take the top cover off, disconnect the linkages, the spring that holds this in, then roll it back over. Then you can take the bolts off and lift that baby out. Then it's super easy. So live and learn, but I did pull it off. 
Okay, to free up some table space, I'm gonna put this cover back on, but I thought I'd just double check the neutral switch. I knew it was working before. But you got that roller there. There's two wires. When it's in neutral, juice goes through. When you move it off to the side for either gear, it's just a micro switch. Breaks the circuit, starter doesn't go off, doesn't work. Uh, they are still available for Ag from Agco for a ridiculous amount, or you can find, if you search for a Z-15GW49-B micro switch, you can pick it up online for probably 20 bucks instead of the 100 and something that Agco wants. About the only difference between it and your normal uh, roller uh, limit switch is the roller is now nah, turned 90 degrees from uh, most of them you see. Makes it a little bit harder to find. But there it is. Since this one's good, we'll leave it in. I checked it before I painted and so you can see also something happened in its past. This, uh, this is a drip tray, the gear spinning, catch or sling oil up on it, runs back, and then that helps feed the that uh, gear for the, the idler shaft for the hydraulic pump. Yeah, that's it. So something was loose in there at some point to grab that. Nothing seems bad now. I can definitely tell this tractor's been worked on before. Oh, well, I have laid out the, both the pan gaskets are here. But I put them in because some of them, as you can see, block that oiler hole. The back one looks like it's going to be fine. And it might still want to notch a little bit out of it. So yeah, I just uh, lay this down here and Obviously, you don't want to cut back too far, or the pan won't seal. I probably cut plenty far back on that, but I think it'll be all right. Or you can see the next video of doing it again. So here we have it in low range. I guess if I reach around and grab the uh, chain coupler, I can turn it a lot easier. But as you can see, as you can see, this is the input shaft here, these splines. These teeth go with this gear. This is low range. So this is turning the same speed as this. So no chance of it galling up and freezing to it. You'll hear stories about guys where usually it goes, happens going down the road or maybe climbing a hill because if your oil is low and the uh, pump starts sucking air, well, same problem as no pump. And uh, but the transmission will seize right up on them, stop, kill the tractor, stop it dead in its tracks. And most of the time, it's this gear has welded itself to the input shaft. And that's quite the ordeal to uh, undo. Usually involves a, a lot of sawing or torching or both. So now let's shift it into high range, which is the center rail so now this gear is locked to the input shaft as you can see it's bigger so it's going to turn the counter shaft faster and then you got this big gear for the reduction on the low range so what you get is look how much faster that back gear is spinning compared to the input shaft watch right in there and this is just, you know, all I can turn it by hand. Now imagine it going 2400 RPM and this baby's screaming. And that's why it needs the pressure lubrication. And that's why if the pump fails or you run it out of oil, it seizes up. So keep those oil filters changed. Keep the oil changed. And I was saying, if you're gonna do a bunch of stationary work, 
little extra insurance is to pop it into that low range and you can see the difference between the input shaft and the high range gear is not nearly as much because the counter shaft gets slowed down so it ain't going to speed this up as much it's actually going to turn slower so splash lubrication is fine for that but that way you know you're running your generator powers out you're running it overnight you're not going to have to worry about if for some reason you lost your lube pressure that that gear is going to seize up on you if you pull one apart and you notice blue teeth or you can really move that gear around on the shaft there's a good sign it's happened i've heard of guys i've seen them before where they uh, set up and then the guys work at it rocking the tractor dumping the clutch whatever but they eventually break them free again and they'll work everything's loose and rattling around and it's just going to chew up gear teeth and get you in the long run but it also might get the tractor back to where you can pull it in the shop and it'll come apart a lot easier so there just a little tip on how to use them and make them last longer but yeah if you're out in the field you know don't hesitate you know don't be afraid to use high range or low range um, just maintain that oil filter there is right here this thing here there's a spring and a plunger under that and that's a relief valve you can test your pressure i think there's another one underneath that's the one they usually recommend to test it's between the filter and the brake housing just a pipe plug pull that out put your gauge in there uh, generally the this relief is set this plunger and spring make about 10 psi of uh pressure that's what this hole up here is is the relief the oil comes in from the pump and this bottom line pushes a plunger up oil goes through goes back to lubricate pto goes up to lubricate the transmission and any excess the plunger comes up far enough and it just squirts out of this hole oil yeah, yeah. you know what i mean it squirts out of this hole and goes back in the transmission so now that i've explained all that i can get this cover back on the clock is ticking this tractor is going to be in some senior pictures. Suck it in, fat boy. There we go. If you paid attention when you took it apart, these holes here take shorter bolts than these in other places, and then these you don't put in until the floor panel's down. Yeah, I made my own gasket. That really wasn't too tough. Um, I find the cardboard they put under uh, seed bags on pallets works good for makeshift gasket material. Just take your hammer and tap around the edges and take the ball peen in and in the holes. Not too heavy, you don't want to mess up the threads, but kind of hit it at a 45 and it'll make a pretty good crease or even shear it. This uh, pretty much popped out, I should have shown it. We got our springs. Our and then our gear shifter. I was in low range. So, yep, there's neutral. You shift both on that side. I think I got it. First try. Okay, then the gasket will go on. I'll put some gasket goo on it. A fair amount of oil gets sent up around this gear shift uh, from the gears moving inside of there. So you don't want to make your hole too big because it'll kind of act as a splash guard and 
keep uh, the oil from coming up as much. From there, just take a, this is some dish, dish soap, liquid dish soap. Don't use the dry stuff. That helps that rubber boot slide over a lot easier. Wipe off the excess. I just need some bolts. All right, let's see if it shifts ranges all right. That one, that one, that one, and that one. It's in. Something I like to do before I put the unit back on is run a tap down all the holes. And the other thing is um, you want to make sure they're all blown out. I've seen tractors that must have sat outside or something got water down in the holes then clean them out good and every one of them was cracked around the uh, where the bolt goes in. My guess is they, uh, the water was down in there. It got really cold out, the water froze, no place for it to go, ice expands, crack. So get all that water out there. I mean, it's gonna rust the bolts too. Chances are they're full of oil from when you took the unit off and just like what came out. I don't grab onto the uh, square part of the tap. I clamp uh, onto the round and then that way if I hit something hard. I don't tighten it down super tight, but you can also turn the clutch on on a drill like this. But rather than snapping a drill bit off, it'll just spin on the shank. I should be wiping that oil off as it comes out so it doesn't go back down in. We are ready to go back together. I just gotta put some gasket sealer on this gasket. Then we can put the pan on. We'll need a gasket here. And I've got that as well. Um, word of advice, don't scrimp on the gaskets. Don't think you can just replace this with uh, silicone RTV and because these gaskets, the thickness of them is figured up into the gear spacing. When it sits down, the pump drive gear meshes with the other one. You leave the gaskets out and that puts it a, enough closer, it starts putting pressure on the bearings and can take bearings out in short order. So spend the, spend the money on the gaskets or even if you're gonna make your own or something, just you know get something that's the same thickness as what you took out. On the rear end here, this one, I just put a film of grease on it. We've done that for years, it seals up good. It'll even seal up all right for the top half. But since that's always, top half has always got hydraulic oil against it, I just opt to do this gasket sealant. This side here is just got the splash oil from the rear end, uh, so it's not really, that's pretty sure when I pulled it off that that's what had been done before. And that's the nice thing is if you have to pull it off again, it pulls off good. So. <laughs> That's why I do that. One last look before the cover goes on. Gasket. Yeah, gasket. Pump is installed. Plastic cap is out of pump. I have uh, I know someone that that happened to before. Forgot to take the plastic cap off and had to pull her back up. Yeah, we're ready. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the seal in for the uh, dash pod here. Probably buff that up a little more. Um, I just had them send me both seals at some point for reasons beyond my understanding. Oliver changed this casting that holds the seal. So there's two different seals depending on the diameter. Obviously that one's too small. 
So I just had them send me both because I wanted the parts on hand before before I even tore into it. And for the cost of that little seal, I'll just save it. Maybe one of the other ones I'll work on will need that size. This is a good time to put the dowel pins in. You want the fatter side facing down, or what will be down. That one went in a little smoother. They help hold your, you want them on this, the bottom side of the pan, which is currently up because it's upside down. They hold the pan on when you're moving around and stuff and line the whole unit up with the rear end. And now I'll just slide this baby on here. A couple of bolts and she'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah, it makes it sound like a busy shop. All right, we're ready to go together. I've got two long studs in these holes. Helps uh, guide things on and also keeps this gasket from slipping around on me. One and two. Something we also want to do is make sure these brake latches are forward. We'll let her down nice and slow. Yeah, I'm only on one pin at the moment. That should get me enough to get the other one. There it goes. There. Just had to level it out. I think we have success. Yeah, she's down here. Looks like it's down all the way up here. I've had it before where the gear teeth just are hitting each other and don't mesh. And that's just a matter of turning the engine a little bit until they do, and then it'll drop down. But looks like they meshed on the first try here. So now, we just need to put some bolts in. I start with these bigger 5 8 bolts because they are a tapered bolt and they will help draw everything down square. And of course we leave these ones out with the taller holes because those are where the platform mounts. We got our brake latches on the right side of the levers there. That's good. Progressing along nicely. Get these bolts out and we'll put this floor panel in. Set them up there for the moment. At least I didn't lose those. We got to carefully. Get those brake latches through the holes. We'll get the other side on before we tighten everything down that way in case I have to wiggle it a little bit to get holes to line up oh 
Before I get too far, I want to get this uh, return from the cooler power steering line back in. forget the power steering line. I got that cap on there good and tight. Okay, it's the moment of truth time. Let's take these extra bearings I had. Hey, that's where those bolts were. It's never a project unless there's leftovers. Oil. Oh yeah, there's oil in it. Let's see what happens. Comes a three point. Senior pictures taken with it tomorrow, but at least it's where I can pull it out and she can stand in front of it and do her thing. Appreciate everybody watching. We will see you in the next one.